Not so long ago, a brand new operator was introduced to the Nix language. And for those of you who like writing some more or less complex Nix expressions, let me tell you, this one will make your code significantly easier to read and refactor. And so in this video, I'll show you how you can try it out today, as well as explain what it does. So without further ado, let's get straight to configuration. Starting with enabling it, because as of right now, the new operator is only available as an experimental feature. Meaning to try it out, you need to enable the pipe operators feature using an extra experimental features flag, which can be passed to any of your usual Nix commands, enabling the pipe operator for all Nix code they evaluate. And if your Nix version is up to date, it will even detect the use of pipe operators in your Nix code and ask you to add the flag if you forget to do it. Alright, so now you have it, but what does it even do? Heavily inspired by other functional programming languages like f -sharp, this operator basically allows you to pass a value to a function as a parameter. And while that may not look that useful at first, since you can literally just pass the value to a function normally and get the same result, the syntax difference becomes obvious when you start adding more functions to the equation. Because as you can see, while wrapping a value with more and more functions will eventually become a difficult to read mess of parentheses, the use of the pipe operator turns our code into a logical chain of operations that does not only better reflect the order and bounds of the functions, but also makes our code much less bulky. But of course, to better grasp the potential use cases of the pipe operator, let's start from the beginning and try to come up with a simple piece of example code to refactor. So let's say you have some expression, be it a list or some other value, and you want to transform it with various functions. Like in this example, where I have a list and I want to filter the numbers that are greater than 50, then sort them and add 10 to each one of them. To do it, I'll be using a built-in filter function that takes two parameters, first being a filter predicate function and the second is the list that we want to filter. A sort function that also takes two parameters, being a sort predicate function and a list that we want to sort. And finally, a map function that takes a transforming function as the first parameter and a list of values that need to be transformed as the second one. And so now, the most straightforward approach to applying these functions to our list is to just wrap it with each one of these functions one by one. This is something you commonly see even in many other programming languages, but notice that because each function has more than one parameter, the code quickly became extremely difficult to read and refactor. So let's put them back and try to do it another way. And by that, I mean use let and in expression to create a variable for every step of our transformation, passing the result of the previous step to the next one every time. This approach is certainly easier to read than the previous one, but as you can see, it introduces a ton of unnecessary repetition, making the operation appear more complex than it actually is, and also forces you to face the toughest challenge of programming, which is naming variables. So let's go back once again and look at another way of refactoring our code, now using a function available in Nix packages lib, simply called pipe, just like today's operator. This function takes two parameters, with the first one being some sort of value that we want to transform, and the second one being a list of functions that will be sequentially used to transform our value. So when the pipe function is evaluated, the value is passed as the next parameter to each subsequent function, transforming it at every step and creating a nice chain of operations. To apply the pipe function to our example, we can simply pass our list to it as the first parameter and then put each one of our functions into a second list, making sure that each one of them has one more parameter to fill in. Evaluating this function will once again give us the same result we had in the beginning, except the syntax is much more readable and avoids unnecessary repetition. And now while there is nothing wrong with this approach, it does depend on Nix packages and may still require some unnecessary parentheses. So let's finally return to the pipe operator. And as you can see, the pipe operator is basically a shorthand version of the pipe function, meaning the pipe operator also allows us to build a nice chain of functions, making it by far the most readable approach from the four different ones we discussed today. And the last thing you should know about the pipe operator is that there's also a reverse version of it, which works the same way, just from the other side. And while that also may not look that useful at first, it can still help you in some cases, like in this example, where I used it to clearly separate one of the function arguments. 
To summarize, I think the pipe operator has a ton of potential. I'll definitely be using it to refactor my own NIC size configuration, and while we're on the topic, let me know what you think about it. Or maybe there are some other functional patterns that you want to see added to the NIC language. I'd love to read your comments. And now, I'd like to thank all the amazing people that support the channel and keep it going, especially all the great monthly members. Of which we have one new member, so thanks Ben Boyer for signing up. All of your support is invaluable. Some of you have probably noticed a weird upload schedule lately, but don't worry, I hope to start making videos a bit more frequently, just need to fix my schedule a bit. And as always, don't forget to check out our Discord server, leave a like or a comment if you enjoyed this video, or subscribe if you are feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.